Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking bump steer, what it is, what causes it, how it affects handling and where it's bad and sometimes good. So to start off with, what is bump steer? Well bump steer is when you have a movement upwards of your tire caused by say a bump and that causes the tire to rotate. So this is a generally speaking undesirable condition because without any steering input, if we assume that there's the front wheel, we end up with our tire lifting up and then it will turn. Now this is a common and fairly unavoidable condition on pretty much all cars. So a lot of bump steer management is about limiting the bump steer rather than eliminating it. I'll actually show you today that it's actually completely impossible to fully eliminate bump steer with a, a rack and pinion system, but we can get pretty close. So what causes this bump steer? Well, let's start off with a simple example and then I'll increase the complexity a bit. If you look at a double I A arm suspension from the front, okay, so looking at the front view, and you imagine that, so this is the, the wheel um, stub axle, this is your suspension upright, that your, your unsprung mass is all sort of bolted through there, there's your two control arms, and this is your steering tie rod, so your steering rack is attached here. Now if we imagine that this gets a bump, so bump steer can happen in either bump or droop, so if this wheel moves up or down, we'll get potential for bump steer. But if we have a look at what happens when this wheel moves up, we'll get an arc coming up here, so that arc will be centered at there. We get an arc in the same sense coming up here. And then that's just a coincidence that's intersecting by the way. And then we'll get an arc coming up here off this. Now you'll notice here that this arm is shorter than those arms. Now I've drawn this to prove a point. As this swings for the same vertical displacement here, this is like a circle. So it actually has to move inwards more for a given level of vertical displacement. Now, what does that mean? It means that as it bumps up, it's going to pull the steering point inboard. Now, if the steering point is on the rear side of the upright, that will cause the wheel to tow out as it goes up. If it's on the front side, it will tow in as it goes up. And you see that the reverse is true if this arm is longer than these arms, and then it will mean that these will pull in faster than this arm. That means that this arm will stay out long because it's not contracting as much through its arc, and then you'll get the result that is the opposite of what I said before. Now moving to a more complex scenario, we have a more realistic suspension system with some kingpin inclination and unequal length A-arms and a, a bump steer, well a, a steering tie rod that is at somewhat of an angle. Now the same principles fundamentally apply here. We have three radii of different arcs, but the thing that you've got to remember is, is that this is going to turn inboard because we're going to get camber change as it bumps through due to the unequal length A-arms, and this is going to cause a compression of the effective length required. So we know that this arm, to minimize bump steer, has to be somewhere between the length of these two arms. Of course, this gets even more complex if we factor that we can place the rack forward or backwards, or we can also have different location pick up points on the outboard side, and you can see that everything gets kind of messy kind of quickly. So how do we minimize bump steer? Well, on the face value of it, it's a pretty simple problem. If we have a look at my crudely drawn McPherson strut on this side and my double A arm on this side, we can see that we've got two sort of common points that we can work with. If we move this tie rod down so that its points were exactly in line with the bottom A arm, bump steer solved. Same thing with the McPherson strut. If we move that down to the bottom, bump steer solved. Or if we move this up to the top, bump steer solved. But the problem is that it's very hard to package a setup like this. It's hard to get your tie rod directly in line with one of your control arms because you've probably got some structure supporting it here that's stopping your steering rack from fitting in there. On top of that, your steering rack has to be a certain length to clear your engine and gearbox if you've got a front engine car, stuff like that which may mean that you will have these points further outboard than is allowable because you'll need this point inboard to get your Ackman right. Or the converse can be true where you need to have this point outboard to get your Ackman right, depending on what you want for Ackman and if you're front or rear steering mount. And then you'll need to get your inboard point right and that may be too far inboard. There's a whole bunch of different factors that can prevent you from getting this in the place you want. Of course, it gets even more complicated when you consider the fact that as you turn your steering wheel, this point moves, but it only moves in a simple direction. However, 
This point, if we look from the top of the upright, so looking down the upright, if we assume a box upright with a steering arm out like that, as we move the tie rod that way, this point arcs that way, right? Which means that your tie rod angle will change from straight to angled down. Now, this has caused a circular motion of its own, which is going to shorten the effective tie rod length. This means that if you have zero bump steer at zero steering, you will, by definition, have some degree of bump steer at some degree of steering. It's going to happen. As you steer, your bump steer is gonna get worse. Of course, you can repeatedly simulate different points here. You can play around with moving your rack forward and backwards, and this will allow you to somewhat negate that. The other way you can do it is you can use the steering system. I'm not quite sure of the name, I forget, but it basically runs a, a trailing arm off the back of the steering box that swings around on the same axis as the steering arm. So if we've got our steering arm here, we can imagine that if we had another arm at the same angle here, and we had our tie rod going from here to here at the same length as one of our control arms, as this bar swings around, these are both going on the same radii, if that's the same length as your control arm, you're going to have zero bump steer. However, this isn't a rack and pinion setup, you're likely gonna get play there, your steering feel's gonna be diminished, it's gonna be a heavier system, it's just not going to be a good idea. Um, for an example of a car that has this, look on a Toyota Hilux. So, what's best practice then to work out zero bump steer? Well, ideally, you use your CAD model. Um, if you don't have a CAD model, it's gonna be very hard to construct a high-performance race car these days because you'd have to just use trial and error on your car. So what you'd do is you'd go, you'd set your points in space, have lines, see what moves around. Now, you can start this out with a two-dimensional fashion. So, if you just drew a basic line diagram of your suspension like that, have your steering point there, there to there, and play around with where the location of this point is here, and then drag it through space in your CAD program. If you want to do this by hand, it's going to be much harder. Of course, you can work this out experimentally as well by trying different tie rod positions using a piece of timber dowel and different steering rack positions. That's a much more time consuming way of doing it. It's much easier to try and get it sorted in 2D in a CAD program, or you can probably even work something out to do this in Excel or come up with some uh, trigonometry formulas to do that and then you can go through and work out your two-dimensional bump steer. Now then you have to take it into 3D points and this you need a CAD model for and that way you can work out whether you want your steering rack forwards or backwards to minimize your bump steer. Also, don't forget that depending on your suspension type, your rear end may have bump steer as well. If you're running a double A arm with an independent tie rod to a rear bulkhead or something like that, you'll end up with a bump steer phenomena occurring on the rear end too. And this is where it gets interesting, because right now I'm about to explain where bump steer may actually be a useful thing. Here's our car from the top. Now, if we consider that we hit a bump and our steering wheel changes in by a degree as it goes, this will cause obviously an increase in grip because you're going to have a different slip angle, you're going to get a lateral force, you're also going to get steering feedback because the caster is going to cause the steering wheel to kick back for the driver. The driver's going to feel the car kick, they're also going to feel unstable G's on the front or if they're already at limit grip they may see a drop off in grip. This is generally a bad idea. So on the steering side of things, you generally don't want to go bump steer, but some guys actually do deliberately do it. Now why would they do that? Well. Bump steer doesn't just occur over bumps. It also occurs when the car's in roll. As you imagine the car rolling over, you'll get a compression of the suspension on one side and an expansion of the suspension on the other. If you'll forgive my terribly drawn single-seater car here, you'll see that the roll will cause this wheel to go up and this wheel to go down effectively. If you tilt your head this way a bit, you'll see that if the body is centered, this wheel's down, this wheel's up. So we're effectively in a condition of bump on this side and droop on that side, which means that we can use bump steer to change our effective Ackerman or providing some level of dynamic toe. So as it rolls, we can change our Ackerman in and out. Now, when you initially turn a car in, it's not initially rolled. So you can have a set Ackerman there, and then once it turns in, that weight transfer goes over, your toe or your Ackerman can change mid corner as the car rolls. Now, watch my video on Ackman for more details why that might be useful. But the fundamental thing is you can do that. The problem here is, is that you can do this anyway just by setting your Ackman right from the start. It's gonna always be a compromise between getting your steering to behave really weirdly 
and getting your car to behave with really good handling. And I guess the, the key thing to take away from that is, is that if your track is smooth, you can probably get away with this. But if you have bumps at all, this is going to be a nightmare. However, it does have more of a benefit on the rear where you don't actually have steering. So for a start, you don't have any driver feedback from the steering wheel sort of thing. All he's gonna feel is the changes in grip and the overall stability of the car. So what you can do is do exactly the same thing, have the toe change during roll. Now you don't have a steering rack here, so the only way you can manipulate the toe of your rear, say get it to toe in for extra stability after an initial turn in, is to have that body roll changing its effective toe in or toe out by using a bit of bump steer. And this is where bump steer can be handy. Again, same problem as before. You wouldn't want to do it if your track is bumpy, and so that's a bad idea. But if your track is smooth, you have the potential to improve your vehicle's handling. As a final note, I'd just like to make mention of off-road scenarios. Now, in off-road scenarios, you don't want bump steer at all. Now, this should be kind of obvious, because as you're going up and down through the bumps, if you have a tire towing in on one side because your wheel's compressed and out on the other side because it's down, you'll start darting off to the sides. Now, the key thing to notice here is that as you're getting compression in an off-road car, it's likely that you're coming down from something like a jump landing. If you're coming down from a jump landing, you're going to have a lot of increased Gs on the car as you're going down, and that's gonna provide an increased normal force, which means you have more effective grip. This means that as your bump steer is kicking, that tire that's kicking in one direction or the other is also going to have increased grip. Now, this is a massive problem because what you end up with is a car that will land and then get darty and it's gonna feel really unstable and quite unsettling. And I actually saw a car recently at an off-road round in Australia have a really bad crash just because of this sort of reason. I'm not 100% sure there was bump steer, but he took a landing with the steering not exactly straight and he went into a tree at about 100 miles an hour. Really, the slight benefits of having the bump steer just don't make any sense off-road. And that's why for off-road, you should always aim for zero bump steer, which is in fact the hardest thing of all to do because in on-road scenarios, you may only be dealing with a very small amount of travel. Like for something like a Formula SAE car or something like that, you've got 25 millimeters each way, so an inch each way. Whereas in off-road, you can have 22 inches of travel and trying to maintain minimal bump steer through that is incredibly difficult. But the key thing to take away is you can't eliminate bump steer, but you can make it better. So that's the majority of bump steer covered. I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully see you next time.